In this video, I'll show you how to build a sticky header that has flexible height, plays well with internal links, and is super easy to maintain. So let's dive right in and begin with HTML. Feel free to open the demo, uh, which I linked in the description. We have a top level div with the class site containing three elements, header, main, and footer. In CSS, I use grid to ensure the footer remains at the bottom, even if the page has minimal content. And I've covered that in a separate video, which I will link as a card on the screen. What's important to understand here is that we're setting the header and the footer to auto, so they'll grow or shrink depending on how much content is inside, but they won't grow beyond that they won't grow beyond what's needed now that's the basic structure now let's make the header sticky up until recently we had only one way of doing that apply position fixed set top to zero and make sure that the width of the header is set to 100 percent because fixed elements do not expand to fill the entire width of the container they're in this approach works well as you can see i can scroll the page up and down but there's one major inconvenience fixed elements are taken out of the normal flow. That means that the auto value that we just set on grid template rows will now be zero. And this will cause the site content to be partially obscured by the header. So to fix this, we need to hard code the height of the header in our grid declaration. I think it's an anti-pattern because the height of the header can change. And to demonstrate this, I intentionally built a very simple navigation that doesn't hide behind the hamburger toggle. Notice how as I resize the screen, the height of the header changes. Yes, this is an extreme example. Most sticky headers don't look like this, but I still think that we should approach every single layout with edge cases in mind and make sure that our CSS can handle those uh, exceptions in, in an accessible way. I mean, yeah, it looks ugly, but you can still click on every single link. They're not cropped or anything, right? And a less extreme example, what if you want to add an alert bar at the top of your site or a secondary navigation with uh, other types of links? Those would go inside site header element and they will expand the, the height of the header. I think you get the point. Hard coding the height of the header is not a good idea if you're shooting for a robust and accessible layout that can handle all kinds of edge cases. That's why Position Sticky, which now has a very good support in all major browsers, makes way more sense here. The key difference here is that Position Sticky is not taken out of the normal flow and it acts as if it has position relative until it hits the top of the screen or the top of the screen plus the value you set using uh, top property. And also since position sticky is basically a supercharged position relative, we don't need to set width to 100 so we can simply remove that line. Also notice how I'm setting these positioning properties on the site header element in BAM terminology, which is an element of a bigger site block. And I do that to separate positioning from the visual appearance. So we're basically creating a container which will house the actual site header block or site header plus the alert bar plus any other navigation bars that you want to put inside. And this makes it very easy to maintain. You're basically like if you need to swap this header on another page with a different one, site header element stays intact and you're just swapping the blocks inside. Okay, so that's pretty cool, right? Like we swapped the position to sticky. Now the page scrolls nicely, header stays at the top. So we're done, right? Not so fast. If you try to click on any of the links in the nav, you'll notice that the headings are hidden behind the header. And that's not a bug. That's actually a feature of the browser, default behavior of the browser. When you click on an internal link or visit the page with um, an ID in the URL, and if the ID is present on the page, the browser will scroll to that element and the top of the element will align with the top of the viewport. How do we fix that? There is an easy fix with a property called scroll margin top, which you can apply to a pseudo class target. And target is like a special class that represents the ID that's being targeted by the browser. So in our case, if we click on health benefits, health benefits ID of the heading is part of the URL. So health benefits heading becomes a target. But I think you can already see the problem, right? We need to give scroll margin top a value, which would be a height of the header. But 
like I mentioned multiple times in this video, we don't know the height of the header and I don't want the hard coded. So I don't know a CSS only way of doing this. If you do, please let me know in the comments. I would really appreciate it. So to get this over the finish line, we'll need just a tiny bit of JavaScript. So here's how I usually do it. I create a CSS property that holds the default, like most common height of the header that I can think of. It's not gonna match every single use case, but I will at least try to find the value that that's most common. Then in JavaScript, I create a function that gets the height of the header. Then I create another function that uses the previous one to set a CSS custom property on the body that has the value of the height of the header. So once it's set on the body, it overrides the one we set in CSS. And then I just create three event listeners for when the markup is loaded, for when the page is fully loading, including the images and all kinds of videos and other assets. And for when the window is resized, you can also add debouncing here to make sure that the this function is not called like extreme amount of times when the user resizes the screen or flips their iPad. And that's pretty much it. Now, if you click on any of the links, you'll see that the headings are not covered under the header and it works well on desktop and mobile, any screen size basically. And that's how you create a sticky header that has flexible height, plays well with internal links and is super easy to maintain. I'll see you in the next one.